Hello, this is Irma Baker welcoming you to our show. We're sponsored by RSVP, the Retired Senior Volunteer Program, and RSVP is a part of Mature Services. We like to think of our show like a kaleidoscope, and according to a dictionary that offers a constantly changing group of bright objects. Well, what we hope to accomplish with these programs is to give you a wide array of the interesting organizations, individuals, and activities in our viewing area. Right after these messages, we'll be back with Glenn Atwood of Kairos, Ohio, our guest for today. RSVP of Summit County has been making a difference in our community since 1972. RSVP volunteers are increasing the quality of life by participating in programs and organizations that provide important services to the community. RSVP matches personal interests and skills with opportunities to serve. If you're interested in adding more meaning to your life and improving the lives of others, please call 330-253-4597, extension 166. Welcome back. Our guest today is Glenn Atwood, and he is a volunteer with Kairos. Kairos, Ohio. And Glenn, welcome. Glad to have you with us today. Thank you. Tell us what Kairos is. Kairos is a four-day program for prisoners in the Ohio State prisons and internationally, or in the United States, we have programs in 38 states and eight different countries around the world. The program is a course in Christianity for the residents of prisons who are in medium and above security criteria. The reason for that is that the goal of Kairos is to change the focus of the prisoners from one of, in, of independence and separateness to one where the men have a group of friends that they can interact with and trust. Uh, well, let me ask you this. Um, I think we all know that prisons have chaplains uh, who take care of the spiritual needs. Where does Kairos come into that uh, relationship? We supplement what the, the chaplains do. Uh, for example, in Marion Correctional Institution here, you have two chaplains for 2,200 men. They are primarily, they take care of spiritual ideas, but their main focus is to take care of the day-to-day -day emergencies that relate between the prisoners in the, there and their families and the outside. There's a lot of communications that they do. So that we really supplement that and our program is designed also to try to change the atmosphere in that prison from one of confrontation to one of cooperation. Well, how do you do that? The weekend consists of if a three and a half day program starting Thursday night and then Friday all day, Saturday all day, and Sunday all day. We take a team of about 50 men into the prison and we take 42 men to go through the weekend. The weekend consists of really four parts. Thursday night we look at and as an introduction. On Friday, we try to get the men to look at themselves and where they're at in their lives. On Saturday, we start to introduce them to the Christian message with Christ and ending with a forgiveness service in the evening. And on Sunday, we then try to get them to look into their selves with the others in the prison. Uh, there are 13 or 14 major talks given, and then after each talk, there will be a time of reflection and discussion among the tables, and then a time of a little recreation, and then we'll go back and repeat this over and over. Interspersed among that are times when uh, little short vignettes of things that they, we think they need to hear but don't really lead themselves into the talks or there. Uh, Kairos, Ohio operates under a license with Kairos International, Kairos Prison Ministries International, 
and we have programs in 38 states and eight countries around the world. Well, how did Kairos get started in Ohio? Kairos started in Ohio down in the prison in Lebanon. A father, Mark Schmieder, spent 10 years trying to convince the warden and the rest of the state officials that this is a program that we should have here in Ohio. Uh, the first weekend was uh, sometime in 1989, uh, and on that weekend, uh, he chose the both positive and negative leaders in that prison, and it was just a magical happening so that the weekend has been going on at Lebanon now ever since then. They are up to number 45, I think it is. They've had the program in 45 times over, yes. what are we talking, 89, 99, 22 about 20 years, years 22, 22 years. years. That's a long history. If you have 22 years of experience, then obviously the program is having some success. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, one of the goals is to change the atmosphere, as we said. And the prison that I'm most familiar with is Marion. When we went into Marion about 16 years ago, the prison was operating under three different federal cease and desist orders, meaning the residents had brought suit against it and the judge agreed with what they said. The COs had brought a suit against various things. And so here we have a prison that's really almost out of control. Uh, almost daily incidents between uh, men fighting and all the rest of the things going. Uh, we've gone from that atmosphere now to a system where Marion now has the fewest number of prisoner to prisoner incidences or prisoner to CO incidences of any place in the state, uh, except maybe some of the minimum uh, security prisons. Uh, and many of the prisoners around the state are fighting to get into Marion because that's uh, considered to be a very, very good prison, a model prison to be there. I think it's interesting, the population has increased from 1,400 until now it's over 2,200. And the prison is well overcrowded, and this has happened in spite of that. So what you're saying is that a prison population of about two-thirds of what it is today is actually a better run, more... Uh, well, actually, it's half again as many. Half again as many, yes, yeah, so. to that, is now almost becoming a model prison. It has been become a model prison. And I, I, I attribute this to really two things. Uh, three very forward-looking wardens who were very, very good managers, who had an idea of what needed to be done, and who were very supportive of the various programs were there. Chaplains who were there and did their work. And in doing this, then they worked with the COs. And they, in turn, create a, credit a lot of this improvement to the impact that the Kairos program has had in Marion. Uh, the Kairos program, as I say, consists of this four, three and a half day week, but it has more than that. Uh, in addition to that, there is after the three and a half day week, a week later we have what's called an instructional reunion, the purpose of which is to establish small groups of men operating under the supervision and the encouragement of the chaplains to become friends, to share, and to become uh, almost a family for each other. Then uh, three months later, we will have another reunion where any of the men who have gone through at Marion, and this is for all prisons, but any of the prisoners who've gone through a Kairos weekend can come in and spend a day with outside volunteers who are there. This a very, has a theme, again it's a Christian theme, which goes through and describes what goes on. And then there are weekly 
prayer and share groups, which I've talked about, and then a monthly reunion where those volunteers who were there for the weekend keep coming back. Uh, each volunteer agrees to come back for at least a year after that weekend is there. So the commitment by the volunteers is there. And as Chuck Coulson said, this is the reason that the Kairos is the most effective of the prison ministries out there. Well, this is certainly an accomplishment, and it sounds like it, it has to be a phenomenal job to organize this. Do you have a very large staff? Staff, it's all volunteer. We have a state board, the, which ha it consists of representatives from each of the advisory councils, all of which are volunteers. And an advisory council is a little very in size, but you normally have 10 to 12 men who break the job up and keep it going uh, down through that. So that's, and that's it. We operate under the, a license from the Kairos Prison Ministry International, which has a very small paid group of men who coordinate this for the United States, all the states here work there, and also around the country, world. You mentioned before that um, one of these weekends, when you have one of these weekends at a prison, that uh, you bring in 50 men. Are those 50 men all volunteers? They're all volunteers. They go through a eight-week training session before we go in, and not only that, but the prison officials give us a safety talk and train us so that we know what to expect in terms of safety and how to behave in the prison. But we that is to develop a comradeship among the team and to make sure that the talks and all the presentations and everything that we take in will fit within the guidelines that we operate under within Kairos. Well, that is a really extensive program. You're bringing in 50 volunteers. Right. You're working with 40 some. 42 uh, men. 42 men uh, during that weekend. Uh, what about the logistics? I mean, does the prison feed all of you f uh, during this weekend? It mm -hmm. certainly is outside the regular cafeteria. <laughs> yes. Uh, the food is prepared by volunteers. That's one of the reasons why we need 50 people to go in. Uh, because the food is prepared. It's brought in by Kairos, paid for by Kairos, uh, and brought in, and we feed the 42 men plus the 50 plus volunteers, and generally a few and sundry other people who show up to see what's going on. So we're preparing about 110 meals for Friday noon, Friday evening, Saturday noon, Saturday evening, Sunday noon, and Sunday evening. So you, it's, uh, it's quite a logistics. For the cost-wise, just for the food and the supplies for the weekend, run about $7,000 uh, weekend. And then we have to add to that the contribution which we have to send to KP, uh, to the international program to support the whole international, which is considered to be about 10%. So we will normally send about uh, uh, we figure between $8,000 and $8,500 a weekend that is donated from someplace by various volunteers, by various individuals out in the, there, whoever wants to do that. Well, that sounds like a lot of cooking. Or do you use catering firms? No, or do no. You it's don't use catering. It's all done by volunteer cooking. Uh, it, it's an interesting process to set the... Uh, menu. The menu is set up and then you have to make up a shopping list for that and go down through it and get all that stuff there. Uh, the meals are designed to provide men the type of food that they would not have in the prison. So they get good quality food, uh, well prepared, tasty, uh, and uh, that's one of the ways in which we get men to agree to come to the weekend. There's a lot of men who come to the weekend on a given weekend and will say, I only came for the food. But before the weekend is over, 
they have bought into the, what we're trying to do and they will stay and stay active in the ongoing program of Kairos in that prison for however long they're there. What kinds of reactions have you had from prisoners, or as you call them, the residents of the prisons? Well, let me put it this way. Uh, we see great changes in it. I'll give you about four examples. Uh, on weekend number one at Lebanon, the first weekend here in Ohio, one of the people that went on that weekend was considered to be the most dangerous prisoner in the state of Ohio at that time. So he was a very strong, very negative leader. And I've heard this from other men that I've met over the years. Uh, he went from that to being a very positive leader who took and decided that the 18 to 25 year old kids who were coming in and could not stay out of the hole or isolation, uh, he helped prepare a program for them, which helped them then to learn to live within the rules within the prison, and they hadn't been able to live with any other rules. On uh, weekend number four in Marion, we sat beside each other, unknown to the team and the people who put it together, the leaders of two gangs. One was the black, and the other was the a white. And the two guys really were enemies. Before the weekend was out, they were both praying with each other, and they had moved to decide to help bring their, quote, gangs into being uh, less confrontational with each other and more supportive of each other. On uh, weekend number five, we had the head of the Aryan Brotherhood go through for the whole state of Ohio. And he went from preaching hate to preaching love on that particular weekend, in just one 40-hour weekend. There have been numerous, numerous, numerous examples of this that we can talk about over the years. You see life-changing things happen. Has this experience changed you at all? How did you get involved? How did I get involved? I had a friend who called and said, Glenn, I would like for you to volunteer for this. I think you'd be good. And I went down to Lebanon for weekend number two. And after the weekend, I was hooked. When I walked into that prison, this was a time when they still had the bell bars and all the weights that you would normally have. It was just before one of the world champion weight champion weightlifting things. And I knew what they were we're doing for weightlifting there. I walked in, I looked down in the room where we were fixing the food. Here were all these weights and here were all the guys lifting. And they had more than one guy who were world-class weightlifters in there. Uh, I looked at their biceps around their lungs, which are larger than my thighs, and I said, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> uh, the particular man that I sponsored not that weekend, and not for a long time after, but later on shared that he was in the prison, he was there. And there was another man in that prison on that weekend, both of them, there'd been a lot of fights between the two of them. It turns out that the one guy was in prison for the crime that my sponsoree had done. Before the weekend was out, they had forgiven each other. Now don't they both should have been there. They, they both admitted that, but they both, you know, had done it. And within about nine months, I lost track of him. And then one day I walked into the lobby at Lebanon and ran into him. Here he had gone from being a maximum security prisoner to being a trustee in the camp outside the prison being able to go out and do anything they wanted outside of the prison. That is really something that we don't expect. We hear about hardened criminals and prisoners who are in there for life or are repeat uh, prisoners, but it sounds like you really are having some 
a significant success with this. Now, what about women? Are, is this program just to help women, uh, just to help men? No, there's Kairos, uh, Interna Kairos International has, the Kairos Weekend is also in Marysville, which is the Ohio Reformatory for Women, at the uh, Cleveland pre-release and the Columbus pre-release. The women benefit just as much, if not more, than the men. Uh, they're just as, or, but again, I can talk about men because only men go into men prisons. Only women go into women's prisons, so it's a woman's, and that's the way.